Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Italy, episode number four. Um, it was pointed out to me, by the way, that the construction steel shortages actually occurs much more often if you're doing accelerated building. So it was recommended that I back off of um, accelerating construction for some of the ships, and I've done so. So we are only accelerating now the Spilato, which I still desperately need to get out, and uh, our battleship. And that's the state of affairs there, so we'll probably be jumping back into another battle in a moment. I just want to kind of relax for a moment. <laughs> so we have a, a moment of peace, basically. Uh, let's kind of take a look at how we're doing. You know, in Battleship Tonnage, uh, this is kind of one of the things which hurts you when you build really powerful battleships, is that uh, their maintenance cost, their build cost is just less, because they have less expensive ships. Now, if we are if we're actually able to go to war, that will be nullified because we can destroy their ships. But without the game presenting for us, this is the strange thing to me and someone pointed it out in a really good way. I don't know if I've mentioned this already, but if I haven't, I at least completely agree and have separately thought that this would be a good way of handling the blockade situation. That if you're blockaded, you should have an option to try to break the blockade, which forces a battle. And if the enemy declines, they lose the blockade. Because right now you'd imagine that the French would not want to engage in a battleship duel. We have better battleships than them, basically. And if they, and it's considering we have an equal number of highest tier ships, what does a blockade even look like in that sense? It, they're basically just raiding. It's not a true blockade. It's, uh, it's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. Um, like, if we encounter their ships, we will destroy them. So, I, I don't know. Just food for thought, still. I'm just, I hope this mechanic is reworked in Rule the Waves 2, if that is ever released. Because we're, <laughs> we're losing a lot of prestige, and I can't, can't gain it back without... Okay, good. We've got that. It was commissioned, the Splato. Um, this is a fleet battle size. We'll absolutely take it. We don't have a choice anyways. It's, it's an unexpected battle. So, we only have two light cruisers and six battleships in the area. <laughs> be interesting to see it must be battleships then and it is okay so this is the first big engagement of the war of the game of the century <laughs> um, we can't do anything until we come into contact with them unfortunately we are fighting at the French um, port so there might be the possibility of hitting some mines that has happened before uh, okay, but I'm excited. Who do we have here? Uh, the Marchius Agrippa. I, I think that somebody pointed out that this should be the Marcus Agrippa, because that was his um, Latin name, but I'm just putting these names in as they are as they are recommended. So if you misspell something, I'll put in the misspelling directly. <laughs> so we have the Marchius Agrippa, the Regulus, the Defensori Italiano, Aquia Nera, the Falco, Scibolante, and the Africanus. Supporting our fleet is the Quercia Reale, which the I guess this is Royal Oak, right? Um, already has performed well, and the Pompey Magnus, the usual pair of light cruisers. Okay, let's move into the battle then. Wind is coming out of the west, a light breeze. Visibility is normal, I would say. Not fantastic, but not poor either. Is this... Oh, it's a raid of some kind. Coastal raid? Well, that's not good. You know what? I'm going to leave my ships exactly like this, though, despite the fact that I don't want this formation, ultimately. Because for the time being, it's nice. We should be able to just meander right into... Oh, I have a bombardment target. Okay. I was going to say we could meander right into their fleet. That's usually how these things work, is that you're set on a collision course with their fleet, or somehow their fleet knows how to arrive at the place where your fleet is going. So we'll just um, rely on that mechanic until we pass basically perfectly east. Okay, there it is. Now we can... Mainly I just want these guys to go to line ahead formation, but let's go squad max. Going to keep these guys at their normal speed for a little bit. Let's see what we have, because we might have something which is unimportant. This might just be a... Minesweeper. We don't know. We're near. We're near enough the port that it could be nothing of consequence. And it, in fact, it is nothing of consequence. So we'll slow back down to cruise speed. Um, 
Can I pursue a little bit further? I mean, a little bit. I'm gonna go a little bit further. We'll make our turn west in a little bit. Okay, two ships. Nice. Okay, light cruisers confuse signals, but that shouldn't be a problem yet. It's the best time for them to do that. There's a minesweeper. We've surely sunk that ship. Um, okay, that's that's a goner. Let's have these guys hold fire. Wait a second. Oh, they've confused signals, right. As soon as we can, I'd like you to hmm, hold fire. Okay, we need you to go squad max now to catch up with this minesweeper before they enter port. And I guess we'll just drift. I mean, it's not ideal to be coming in to be pushing ourselves against the coast because that will put whatever enemy we face at the wind advantage. But uh, there's really no way around it. We don't know where they're coming from. So I'm going to turn my fleet southwest and we're going to start making our way towards the bombardment target now. Since we have visibility of the port, there's nothing here, obviously. Are we able to get close enough to hit this? Minesweeper. Okay, there's one at port, but that is a destroyer. Okay, let's let's close in and see what we can get done here. We're about to go to AI control, which is not fantastic, but I can still kind of finagle that. There is a way, obviously, where you can continue to... Okay, good, we got them. You can continue to control them even after their AI control, like so. That's another hit. I'm assuming that this is enough to do the damage we need to have done to sink that minesweeper for six inch shells. It's probably not, but we've done some damage anyway. We'll let those guys come back and we will just focus. Okay, this is probably the one we actually want to fight. I'm not gonna give the order to increase speed yet, but that is definitely a ship coming quickly. Let's go. In fact, let's increase the squad max because I do want to engage this armored cruiser before she has a chance to turn away. And she is turning away now. We have another, this might be a battleship though. So we're just gonna go right towards this whole mess. Um, yeah, the light cruisers probably won't be very effective, so I'll let them pick up survivors. And this is probably the main fleet, so we're gonna go ahead and turn so we can get ourselves into a favorable wind advantage. And note that right now I still have not actually um, begun to control my secondary divisions. They're fine as is. I'm pretty happy with the battle line we have going on. And I didn't see, but we have taken hit. Darn it. Okay, we did hit the Cote Lagon with the 12-inch um, shell. That's nice. And it was only a our Emerald Chenet. It was a 10-inch hit, which hit our, belt, hit our belt. But we do have pretty good belt defense. 11 and a half on the, um, that's the Africanus class, right? Yeah, the Regulus class has 9.5, so that, that's a little bit more susceptible to damage. But the Marchius Agrippa, our lead ship here, is an Africanus class with a really massive 11.5 inch belt. Uh, one thing I probably could have done is put the deck for these down to 2. I really didn't need 2.5, but it's water under the bridge at this point. So I'm gonna I'm gonna push in hard to engage because I, I believe our ships are superior. Let's just take a look at the what the French battleships are bringing to the field. Yeah, they have something like this, which is uh, this is just horrendous. I would say a horrendous ship. I would love to get in close on this um, and do some real damage. One of the things which could cause us a little bit of heartache is the seven-inch guns, but they only have seven per side. I believe I have ten per side. Let me double check. I have nine per side. Yeah, that's, I mean, nine compared to seven, it's a big difference. The caliber is not as much of a difference because the either way, there's not, it's not going to penetrate belt. And they only have one and a half inch decks. So this is actually, uh, this is a different battleship. So the uh, Richelieu hasn't sufficient, does have a sufficient deck to stop splinters. I mean, according I'm, to what I know, we did see last time the splinter penetrated my deck, which was two inches. So I think that was a deck extended hit though. And it was just a typo. 
However, the uh, Friedland class, this does not look... It does not look as good of a ship. Less secondary batteries. I mean, it's just a lighter ship. It's only 13,000 tons. What is this one? Yeah, this is the 15,000 tons I would expect. We have a Colbert class, which is also one and a half inch deck. I mean, it's basically the same. I don't know why they do this. They have the Friedland, which is the identical to this. And another Friedland. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty content that we can engage these ships aggressively and we'll come out ahead. So that's what we're going to do. We are offering open battle, <laughs> basically. And I, I do want to close, but I want to close in a way which doesn't sacrifice our ability to lob broadsides. Although, maybe that's just unnecessary. Maybe we do just... Okay, we did land some hit. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I think I'm just going to keep this very aggressive angle. And if, however they react, we'll just react very slightly... So they're willing to close. We'll go ahead and close. We're getting a few good hits on the Colbert. I didn't see which ones exactly. I should have... Oh, we can still do it. So this Colbert took a hit. Ah, good. Both of them ended on the same ship. That's always nice. And we can also do our, our traditional very aggressive move to try to split the um, the battle... What is that? I, I want to say Waterloo. That's not the sea battle at all. Lord Nelson's famous Trafalgar. Yes. Um, we can also we can also do the famous move from Trafalgar to to pierce right into the enemy ranks and separate them, cause confusion, and hopefully isolate a few ships. Okay, I think overall it's going our way. I would say it's favorable for us so far. That was definitely a very favorable. That is uh, round three. Was it all the same, Rishilu? It was not. Oh, because two were Richelieu and one was Friedland. Okay. But we're landing the hits. This is kind of what I expected as well. I do want to keep um, my heading south of east because we want to keep the wind on our side. Keep it out of... Um... Okay. Coal Bunker saved us there. That's nice. And we're still doing some damage to one of their ships at least. One of the problems with engaging moving south and cutting through their lines is that we will have to face a swath of destroyers after that and that's not that's just not good but I would say we're winning this battle overall I'm gonna slow the head one down to 17 just let the rest of them catch up I mean we've gotten a lot of good hits Which Colbert took two hits? Oh, these are six-inch shells, though. So not, so it's not so important. Yeah, all six-inch hits. Okay, that's fine. And Marcus, uh, well, Marcius Agrippa, <laughs> as she's so named, taking a few hits on this turn. Probably best to pull her back away. It's nice to see the belt hits are not penetrating, considering we have 11 and a half inches. Oh, the Regulus is only nine and a half, though. Ah, but it was an engine room hit that didn't penetrate. Ah, the Greats are fouled. So we're down to the max speed of 17 already anyway. Well, the destroyers are kind of lagged behind, so we're going to make our famous move, and we're going to make it now. Which means it's the worst time for you to choose to do that. Yeah, we're just going to go right in. Their destroyers immediately know what's up, and yeah, <laughs> it's going to become a bar fight and a, I mean, a very crowded room. <laughs> what do they say? It's like a, a bar fight in a phone booth. <laughs> I think I've heard the fights addressed that way. Yeah, now we'll just try to wrangle off these and see what we'll, what happens. Obviously, putting our ships gravely in danger, but if, if it works, it works. Okay, there. Oh, we're actually launching torpedoes. That was unexpected. What's going to happen? Well, let's. if we can stay out of torpedo range, we can actually sink a few of their destroyers as well. Possibly. Are we going to use our secondary fire to slow these guys down? Oh, we can get to this Richelieu. I didn't even notice that this is still isolated up here. Uh, 
I'm gonna take you off. Put your line ahead. Oh, well, you can't turn together either then. Okay, good. And get you over there to ward off these destroyers. And then let's try to sink this Richelieu. So complete chaos, everything has devolved into just a, a madness. <laughs> Aquanera, what are you? You're an Africanist, so get your butt over there. You're much needed. And we're not worried about you taking a few hits. Okay, good, finally we're starting to hit those destroyers. This is what I was hoping. In fact, the Quarchia Reale, she's very close. Hopefully she's going to be able to get off a few volleys of her own. I don't know what you're doing, Aqu Aquianera, but I need you this way. We're actually hitting the Friedland class, <laughs> of all things. But if we can sink one of their battleships, obviously it'll end the, the blockade. I mean, I don't know if that's obvious. To me, it seems like it would. I'm going to take you off AI control because I don't even know what you're doing anymore. You're not responding to orders the way I want, at least. Okay, well, we'll split the Regulus and the Marchius Agrippa then. You guys are focusing on destroyers. Good. Oh, it looks like we sank one destroyer. It's fantastic. The first casualty. That might be the first... Oh, no. I mean, we have sank... We have sunk, I should say. A armored cruiser. I'm not really paying attention to the hits right now. Let me recap. Not much has happened. Let's wear her down. And here comes the catapults back full steam. Let's try to shield with our light cruisers. Good, it worked. Now, they might have launched torpedoes, but... Okay, let's pull back out. This is uh, certainly a mess. <laughs> and the funny thing is, the French fleet is... It, it, it kind of realizes that they're in dire straits, that they need to support their own. But, oh god. Okay, that's one hit on the catapult. It'd be dangerous for them to launch torpedoes now. They'd be just as likely to hit their own. We're landing some good hits. I like this. Catapult's also getting hit, so keep chasing those, my light cruisers. I'm going to take everyone off of the AI control now because it's just getting to be stupid what they're starting to do. I'm not, I'm not even sure what they're trying to do. But we're still landing most of the hits, so... Patria e honore. For country and honor. And this ship is slowing down greatly. Now would probably be the time I would encourage torpedo launching, but considering we only have... And this is definitely why you want torpedo launchers. Because you can go in like this. If we get lucky with a hit, we sink this thing, which is fantastic. We do have to watch out. The reinforcements are going to be coming up soon. Our light cruisers are going to be needed just as much in the south in a moment. Okay, let's spin the Regulus around. I don't know how the Regulus ended up with the flagship now instead of the Marchius Agrippa, but these things happen, I guess. We'll kind of do a very strange maneuver where we cut across. The Africanus is going to... How are you holding up? Yeah, you're doing fine. Very little damage. Oh, this is... Yeah, the Africanus is... I, I was confusing the Africanus and the Regulus. Yeah, this is the the Africanus. I mean, she can handle her own. Good. What I'm seeing here is just fantastic news. Hits on the Destroyers. Hits on the Richelieu. She is on fire with heavy damage. That's exactly the way we're going to sink her, is through fire. So we'll get the Regulus to pop down. We'll get the Defensore Italiano to head off the new Destroyers incoming. Hopefully a few broadsides will keep them pinned. Whoop. Okay, not that. This. Like so. Um, we've warded them off in the north. I'm just going to have our light cruisers return to deal with possibly this flotilla of ARC class destroyers. Oh, Espinole as well. Or Espingole. I don't know how to say this in French. Very similar to mine. Design, yeah, two, three inch, four above. Oh, they did four above water. Okay. I usually only do three. But I don't really build destroyers anyway, right? I have to say, I think that ship's going to be headed down. And you know what we can do is get our light cruisers to hopefully deal the finishing blow. Which I, I didn't even consider, but it seems like a really good option now. Are there battleships turning away? 
what's the best thing to do here? Is it to capitalize on, you know, the situation? Yes, I think so. We pursue a fleeing enemy. Because we already have one of their ships knocked out. And we'll just, we try to gain, okay, the Colbert, let, let's go after these guys then. Turn south. Wave all the flags to turn south. We're headed towards the Colbert and Friedland. Hopefully our light cruisers will be able to knock out, deliver a, a you know, a final fatal blow to the Richelieu. We're gonna have them turn like this so that they get a nice broadside perspective for their torpedoes. And here we go. Now technically the wind is uh, out of the west, so we prefer to stay east of the Colbert, but more important I think is just to main contact. Okay, the Africanus is going to get herself kind of lost, I can see. She reattached, but the, her, the ship she's reattaching to is going the opposite direction. A new unidentified ship. Is this the armored cruisers? Because that could be problematic. In fact, I forgot to set the flotilla attack option to encourage our light cruisers to launch. That is a battleship. Wow, I mean, this is the Italian. I mean, the French fleet is really out of sorts. I don't know if that's even true, but they are going slow enough, I believe it. Well, yeah, we're just chasing them on all fronts. Now, if we can get this Colbert, ah, a few hits on the Regulus, which is not as powerful of a ship, but you remember, my belt extended, which absorbed this hit, is three and a half inches. It's uh, no slouch It's no slouch for armor itself. I remember specifically making this decision so that we don't get as many pet training hits. <laughs> uh, just take a drink, take a, a moment to like, think about the perspective of everything. <sighs> We've done this well. The worst thing that can happen now is that we lose our advantage by losing a ship. And I think, oh, oh, it's gone. It's gone, okay. Then move in, full speed ahead. If we can just get this Colbert, then I'll be very happy. Or the Cote Lagone, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'll take one other ship, though. I just want one more. And this Cote Lagone seems to be very aggressively headed towards me. Okay, let's try to pin her in. She's just absolutely nuts. But we already turned our Falco Scivolante for just such a, um, a possibility that she would pivot east. So we do have her pinned. Unfortunately, nobody's hitting her yet. But is it worth it? I think it is worth it that we um, just take off an armored cruiser. Remember, the armored cruisers is the, the discrepancy that is largest in terms of our fleet versus theirs. We can always look here and just see that again. We have two armored cruisers. They have eight. Cote Lagoon is light? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know how many points this will be worth because it is basically a light cruiser, but I think it's still worth blasting. <laughs> so we'll close in. With the visibility reduced as it is right now, um, it only makes sense just to try to finish off this ship and then call today. Yeah. I think that this is going to be the end of it for her. Done some good damage already, I think. We are taking a few hits. I, I did expect we would. What do they have? Seven inch guns. Yeah, so it's definitely threatening for light cruisers, but we can just chase them down. Yeah, they're taking a few more hits. The Defensori Italiano is right on their heels. I want you to obey orders, so <laughs> manually control you, I guess. Yeah, here we go. Is that on fire? Not yet, but soon. And we have battleships approaching from both sides. Let's try to stay on one side so that we limit the number of torpedoes we eat ourselves. Okay, so that's fine, because even though this is an armored cruiser, and you think, okay, that light armored cruiser is obviously not much to worry about, it still counts as points for an armored cruiser. This is another thing, you know, a, an abstraction the game has to make. So sinking this is still going to reduce the number of points and therefore the blockade points that the Italians have. I mean, that the, that the French have, of course. We'll swing back around. Oh, God, we're right in it. Okay, this is normally where bad stuff happens, but I'm still so confident in our fleet's performance that we're going to go ahead and pursue. 
Yeah, the order is pursue. The pursuit flag has been waved. We don't want the destroyers though. What the hell? I didn't, uh, this is a different Richelieu. Okay, all ships return to the site, I mean, to the source of the crash. Insane, I mean, th this can be dead stopped and we're very close, we just need to get there ASAP, immediately. Oh god, the Faculty Sc Skill Volante was hit by a torpedo. Okay, Faculty Skill Volante has to, just absolutely has to not take any damage, uh, any further damage, and she is, she's just getting mauled by the, Oh god, it's not, it's not looking good. How is it that we're losing... I mean, I don't understand what's going on here, but I, I suspect that the Falco Scavalante is not long for the world, very unfortunately. Now, we'll be right there to... Hopefully, yeah, so we're... It's just these two ships are just pounding each other, and you'd have to imagine that that means that they're both going to go down. If we can rescue the <laughs> Falco Skivalante um, fast enough, though, maybe there's a chance we save her. Okay, she is still dishing out punishment. They're both hitting each other, but we're just going to get in there as quickly as we can. And hopefully help win the fight. We're chasing off the battleships with our light cruisers. Let's get you to be not under AI control. Oh my god, your max speed is why is this? Oh, that's squad max. Okay. First of all, why are you turning together? Don't. Second of all, get as much speed as you possibly can. And let's see if this works. We need to curl early, curl late. Yeah, it looks like I have to reverse those. Wait, I can't tell. Okay. Yeah, I was right the first time. Africanus will come in. This is so dangerous. Ah, she's sinking. Okay, the only thing we can try to do now is just avenge her. Avenge her. Which I think it should be easy to do. I think I see her moving. She's going five knots, but we should have the advantage that we are not moving that fast. And she is... I mean, that she's not moving very fast, which makes her an easy target. Okay, those are probably destroyers coming in to finish the job, perhaps? I don't know. But luckily we have our light cruisers and perfectly in time to engage. Looks like they're working. Defensory, yeah, come back here. Ah! Shoot, the Pompey Magnus did eat a torpedo. I mean, it's better that the, we eat the torpedo than the battleships, but... They would serve really well as, as well, which is sad, but Virtue Reality will have to just seek vengeance as well. We have ships going everywhere. I'm probably going a little bit too fast. Let's slow this down, make sure that we can capitalize on sinking another battleship. And certainly, okay, what, what is going on here? What are you guys doing? What we need is to make sure that this ship is destroyed. That is priority number one. Make sure that this ship is destroyed. The fact that they are not engaging it, like, seriously, makes me think that maybe it is already going down. Yeah. We're hitting it with a bunch of stuff. I think I can be confident that it's going down, but the problem is it's so tangled up with the our own ship. It's really hard. Okay, she's, what does this say? Heavy damage on fire. Okay, good. So let's just assume that one's going down. Let's switch targets over to the next ship. I want to get a better advantage out of this. I feel like we, we could have done better. Is this really an armored? Oh my gosh. Sink another one? 
I don't know what happened there. It might have been a torpedo which hit or something. Maybe I didn't pay attention. Hmm. Oh, never mind. That's that's of course the old the light cruiser that's not the fake armored cruiser, basically. Okay, visibility looks like it might be getting better. Falco Scavolante has sunk. I'm just that's really unfortunate. Devastating blow. This could have been like a huge victory for us. It's still going to be a great one. But the loss of a single ship means that... And that actually, these are our first two ships that we're losing at all. We're still doing some damage to the Richelieu. That's not important anymore. Pompey Magnus, what are you doing? You're the one that's sinking? Yeah. Okay. So where is my other light cruiser? Ah, she's right here. Fantastic. Okay. Well, you know what? I guess... We'll go over and destroy the bombardment target before I forget. <laughs> the one thing left to do to actually get over there and finish the mission. Um, let's slow down as well. Okay, we're going pretty slow. Now, visibility is not going to be an issue. Basically, as soon as we leave... Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? really want to identify her, but I think she's a battleship. She is. Well, the one thing we could try to do is herd her west. So, you go down. Africanus has to pursue east. Okay, she's turning. This is still nice, so we will pursue. Okay, it's a Friedland. Our Quercia Reale is actually the one landing hits, too, as well. It's nice. Very, very, very weak deck. So we just need to pummel it and hopefully some splinters do some damage. Okay, Africanus, the show's now yours. Okay, the Quirtu Reality is the one doing most of the damage, actually. But that's okay. The main thing is keep her locked in. Okay, pass through hit, but two more hits on the Friedland. Everything is going as planned so far. Quirtu Reality took a hit. That's okay, we can actually afford her to turn south because we already have uh, the Regulus over ready to pursue. And she's boxed in. I don't know what she's going to be doing. Like, What's what's her game plan here? Let's turn you off AI control and Pompey okay, Magnus has sunk. That's fine. We still have their ship here. It's on fire still. And that really speaks to the fact that she's going to be sinking. It's like been like 30 minutes probably that she's been on fire after taking all those hits. Yeah. So we leave her with a full confidence that she will sink. I think this Friedland's also going to end up going down. So we can, we can wrangle one more success from the day which is quite nice. Fortuitous, I mean, obviously we didn't seek this Friedland, we were seeking our bombardment target, but we should have enough time even after this to go after that bombardment target, but uh... okay, now we're really starting to lay on the, the lead. There's a few hits still here and there, but she's boxed in and this is all over but the crying, I would say. Let's have the Defensori um, Italiana head north to kind of box in the, from that angle. Incredibly close distance as well. We do have torpedoes free to launch. I don't know if I'd want them to launch, but African has come quick. Regulus turns slow. Yeah, she's dead in the water. Let's go ahead and hopefully lay in some finishing blows. Gonna try to keep everyone on the west side so that torpedoes are not as much of an issue. It's really hoping that Quercia Reale would launch her her broadside of torpedo complement. It did not happen though. Gonna slow down to cruise speed as well. It's possible the enemy, uh, the French fleet, will continue this way. Um, but this is also a sunk ship. We can see she's on fire, heavy damage. We've done our work here. And a torpedo hit just the finish. I mean, the 
the Coupe de Gras, really. All right, so let's move over and destroy this bombardment target. I will take two torpedo hits, sure. So we're going cruise speed, try to get everyone lined up back into formation. And then we'll go see about this uh, bombardment target. Very, very low priority, if I'm totally honest. And we may still be blockaded next turn because, you know, we do have... Uh, we're going to have a lot of ships in repair. Not that they won't, though. I think we did a pretty good spread of damage to them as well. Losing that light cruiser hurts. Losing that battleship hurts more, obviously, but that was a one-to-one -one trade. So... Couldn't be avoided. Okay, this is what I was this is what I'm here for. It might be one of those really bugged things where we can't actually hit it. We got it. Once, twice, three times a lady. A couple more hits. We've done some damage to it. Okay, we'll have to swing back around for another pass. It's nice to see everyone nice and organized on our line. Okay, let's just go normal speed now. I'm going um, 14 knots for a couple of reasons. Mostly it's to conserve our uh, our grates, to make sure we don't have to go, our, um, our grates aren't fouled by having to shovel coal very quickly and all the... Oh, what the? Are you kidding me? Oh, well, this is just really unfortunate timing for this Minesweeper, I would say. <laughs> Did we hit it yet? Oh, we hit it with a 12-inch gun. That's probably going to be enough. All right, fair enough. An unexpected addition to the to the day's total. Um, why are you guys just, like, being broken? What what in God's name are you doing, Gorgio Reale? I, I can't babysit everyone at once. This is why you'd like an AI which worked, but... Alright, fine. Just... Can you finish the job so I don't have to control such a group of idiots? Like, what are you guys doing? I think they're bugged out on the wall. Gorgio Reale, okay. I don't know who's in line first, but just go this way. Seems to be working. What are you doing? Good God. Okay, I can get them onto... Yes, fantastic. Not under AI control, which is good. Because <laughs> they're being very silly. You're probably a little too far away. We're going to spin back around, try to do a little bit more bombardment. We'll do it at cruise speed, that's the idea. Keep things nice and slow, slow and steady. What in the world is going on here, though? A little bit of outside noise, hopefully it's not too distracting. Hopefully we can actually uh, hit this target. Just a couple hits. A couple more, please. Come on, Africanus, pull your weight. I don't even know what this bombardment target is. I, I don't know if it's an actual gun emplacement or not. Oh, the Quartier Rally is firing. Come on. She's holding... She's not sure of the identity of a French target in French countryside. <laughs> We're not sure if they're friend or foe. <laughs> just, sometimes there's little, little silly things there. What in God's name? Come on. I can't wait to get this guy close enough to put him to AI control. I mean, take him off AI control, because it's just the stupidest thing. What in the world? Like, what is your attempt right now? You're on support. Why don't you just support the Regulus? Hmm. Can I get these guys to go to AI control? That would be nice as well. That means I'd only have to babysit two. No, they're being stupid immediately. Oh, no, no. Looks like it will work. And I can take you off. I can't. What? I don't even know what you're doing. Okay, well, the Quercia Reality is just... Her captain's having a, a mental breakdown. 
going to let her do it, her own thing. The important thing is, thankfully, that she didn't have this breakthrough earlier. Come on, hit that target. Ah, we still didn't finish it. The Africanus appears to be bugged out now as well. Well, just, just great. Come on, destroy the target so we can end this mission. Somebody, please, hit the target. I know, I know it's an unidentified land feature. Oh, oh, another end, and that's not good. Ugh. We're risking our ships by being here. I don't even know what the other guys are doing. What? Are you... Are you kidding me? Have you no sense at all? I'm, I'm going to pretend that she's trying to head back to Genoa. By moving right into the Nice port. It's just a very strange way of getting there. Come on, kill it, kill it, yes, finally, get out of here. What is the Africa, oh my god, I just, this mission can't be over. Son of a B-I-T-C-H, it's fine, it's just a minesweeper, Africanus will live. So we have to babysit the Africanus, we have to get these two fleets to intercept as quickly as possible. Oh, she's actually destroying a destroyer. Well, that, I mean, that's very fortuitous. I'm pretty happy about that. That's one more ship sunk that didn't have to be sunk. Shouldn't have been sunk if the Africanus was actually paying attention, listening to orders, but... Yeah, these are the kind of funny things that happen in Rule the Waves sometimes. And maybe it's an argument to be made that Captain's Mode would be better. But, uh... That's a complaint we'll save for another day, because it's one I've made many times. So, we have the end of the engagement coming up. There it is. A major victory for the French... I mean, sorry, the Italians, us. We lost one light cruiser, one battleship as expected. They lost three battleships, one armored cruiser, four destroyers, the transport ship, and the land target. So, quite good. This is definitely the success I was hoping to have that will get us out of the hole. Yeah. So, unfortunately, the Facul Escapolante was an Africanus class, and it was worth the most points, but theirs were worth 25,000. Not too much less than ours. And yeah, this is this is a really tells the whole story. I don't understand how this can work that you can call this Chansey a armored cruiser. If it's worth less points, it's worth less points than my Pompey Magnus. That does not make sense to me. Because my light cruiser is worth less points on the strategic map. Some kind of bug here. But I'm focusing too much on... I guess when you see... When you play this game long enough, you start to see all the little details. Mainly when they don't work out in your favor, right? <laughs> it's very easy to have observation bias, but... So that was a good episode. I'm definitely going to call it to a close here because we're over 40 minutes. We are now taking the lead, though. That was definitely a commemorative battle. The Battle de, the battle of Ile du Levant. And our prestige has improved, thank goodness. They gained points for blockading us, but I think that's the last time it'll happen. One, two, two, only, only two serious ships. Why is the, oh, the Edna's left over. So only the Marcius Agrippa has been um, sent to port for repairs, which means that we're at 35 points and France is at 23. The blockade is over. Fantastic. But I, again, I'm doing a, definitely call this video to a close here. Looks like we can actually unhalt few of these ships as well probably both of them and just keep up with our accelerated battleship building i think this is good so thanks for watching and until the next episode take care